But uh, let's talk about quickly JGR, Kyle. Uh, sure. We all know Ty Gibbs is taking that 18 car next year. There's yep. no secret about that. It's just a matter of time when they announce that. But uh, what do you what do you think JGR's future short term looks like, and ultimately long term? And will they reg- regret re- regret excuse me this decision on losing Kyle Busch like this, or is it you know trying to build for the future? In your opinion? Yeah, I, I think they're at the stage where they kind of have to build for the future. I think it would have been perfectly fine if Kyle Busch returned and Gibbs spent another year in Xfinity and kind of have that process kind of get kicked another year down the can. And we are kind of doing this next year with whatever driver, whether it be Bush, Hamlin, Truex, whatever. Um, But Joe Gibbs racing for a long time has been an old team. And every year we've kind of gone, look at this Toyota pipeline. Look at this great prospect they have. They've got to figure it out. And it's always been one car. And Matt Kenseth was the guy that unfortunately got the ax way back when. Um, it was kind and, of Carl Edwards that almost started it all with yeah, Suarez well, going in the yeah, 19. That too. Um, but in terms of th- that was more Booting driver. Yeah, yeah, that was driver decision. Um, but in terms of the team being kind of veteran led, which they have been for forever. Yeah. Um, and having the best prospect pipeline in NASCAR and consistently losing guys, whether it was way back with Joey Logano, whether it's more recently where they kind of had to make a decision between Eric Jones and Christopher Bell because their B team, the satellite team went away and they didn't have another seat for them. And they only had four seats and you had three championship level guys. And yeah. look what Eric Jones is still winning races and stuff like that. So um, uh, of course that's a driver that they would have loved to keep in a Toyota yeah. if they still had a second furniture row team, if they had a furniture row team, if they had 2311 at that time, Eric Jones would still be driving a Toyota. That's just not the situation they found themselves in. So they've consistently lost prospects. Hell, even Noah Gregson was originally a Toyota driver and switched and stuff like oh, yeah. that. William Byron at one point was a KBM driver, Harrison but that Burton. was more of a loan deal, stuff like that. Harrison Burton. Um, they've lost Christian Axis in the Toyota and tons pipeline too. And t- well, he's still Toyota driver right now, but we'll see how things go with that. Um, But yeah, they've lost tons of prospects that they put money in and developed year over year. And they've, once they've gotten to the cup series level, they've gone and drove for a different manufacturer. You can argue that it's worked for Joe Gibbs racing the team because they've still won races. They've still contended for championships, all those kind of things. There hasn't really been a prospect other than Joey Logano ages ago that they lost and kind of regretted so far in terms of being that championship level guy. Um, But eventually you got to kind of move on to the next era. And it's unfortunate the way that it happened with your number one guy over your history, having to leave under awkward circumstances. And the guy that takes the seat is the grandson's uh, is the grandson. Like it's not a, great look in terms of that but it's not in terms of going into the future it's a cheaper driver it's a driver that has shown immense talent over the last few years um that's shown an ability to punch above his weight class and he's a driver that has gotten cup starts recently and it's like i mean why not now like better yeah better now and get the experience when basically everybody's on the same playing field in terms of learning a new car then falling behind the eight ball and trying to learn while everybody else has a couple of years under their belt. So I get it from Joe Gibbs perspective. They're going to have a different performance, of course, because it's going to be a rookie driver learning the ropes versus a veteran that's been there, done that for forever. Um, so don't expect them to go out and win a championship immediately or anything like that. No, but the unfortunate reality for Joe Gibbs is that this is probably the smart business decision. Instead of bringing back, the driver that has arguably been your third most successful over the last couple of years, bring in the cheap driver who's going to be your future now and help build him up so that he's better sooner. Um, and, and that's kind of the the unfortunate reality of the situation. We'll see what happens in the coming years uh, with Truex and Hamlin and stuff as they really get into their future, whether they go for free agent drivers, whether they bring up through the pipeline. Uh, but for now, I, I think it's, unfortunately the the right decision long term for joe gibbs racing to put ty gibbs in in that seat now rather than trying to push it and try to figure out a situation that kind of works for all parties involved i don't think we'll know the answer to that question obviously for another three four years 
really like what, what yep. we can see from Ty Gibbs in the cup series level once, I mean, he's going to be like what, 23 by then. Like he's still, yep. uh, he's still ridiculously young. So, I mean, his path, to cup, the cup series has been tremendously fast compared to most drivers, uh, trajectory but it does obviously help when your grandfather is the owner and the name owner of a massive team in the cup series and the flagship car we talked about last from, week it yeah, was available from that perspective it helps in terms of knowing you're going to have a seat regardless yeah. of whether you have sponsorship or not because they'll figure it out but he's earned this opportunity full stop yeah he i mean i think everybody can draw to you know whether that was his first Xfinity series winner in his first start, or you look at probably beating Kyle Larson straight up head to head at road America this summer. And as soon as he got the 2311 fill in job for Kurt Busch, I think that's when it ultimately stopped that, that closed the doors on Kyle Busch's return to Joe Gibbs racing. You wouldn't give a guy like that who was meant to be John Hunter Nemechek as the reserve driver. I was going to say it, 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 when it went from being John Hunter Nemechek is getting that drive to Joe Gibbs calling up and being like, Hey, I actually put Ty in this car that's when you kind of knew how things were going to play out. Yeah. And he wouldn't be given that seat. I mean, he's got, he's going to have the rest of the season under his belt. Um, and he's going to go into next season with, uh, you know, over 10, you know, about 15 races of cup series experience underneath him in a Toyota. That's probably not too far off of what the 18 car is going to drive like next season. So that's all benefiting Kyle, uh, benefiting Ty Gibbs, but I still believe that this is a completely short-sighted move on Joe Gibbs perspective, not just for his cup series team, but also for the future of his cup series team. When you look at the prospect pipeline after Chandler Smith, if he stays in the Toyota camp, which apparently he's not really a Toyota driver as much as people maybe thought he may look uh, elsewhere because it seems like it's Corey Hyman, John Hunter Neiman checked out of the more Toyota drivers from everything that I've seen. I could be wrong on that. We'll see what happens, but you know, this is a guy that has brought you your two championships, your most successful driver in history, full stop. He is their most successful driver in history. No, there's, he there's literally no is. He, he has yeah, the most I, wins. That's... I think he's their best driver they've ever had too when it comes to not just on track performance, but what he's been able to bring to that organization overall. And the, you can't replace a guy like Kyle Busch. And that's not what Ty Gibbs is meant to be doing next year. He's, he's going to be Ty Gibbs. He's going to go out there and prove his own path and make his own way in the sports uh, as much as he can in the 18 car. But when you look at what Martin Truex Jr.'s contract situation is right now, where he signed a one-year deal, could be coming back in 2024, could not. He may retire at the end of next year. Then you could have maybe brought Ty Gibbs up next year if you could have just tried to find some sort of deal with Kyle Busch I'm sure that he would have wanted to stay there if things got off to a better foot things got south after the Oracle deal fell through and I think it was a downward spiral from there because he really wanted to I think he from watching the Bristol Dirt press conference when he won after the race him and Coy Gibbs of course that's Ty's dad uh was trying to really try and make this team uh, really trying to sell sponsorship and it seemed like they were in a positive trajectory and I think a couple of weeks after that, the Oracle deal th fell through. And after that, it seemed like they had basically given up on their, on their star driver. And I think that that's, I've lost a lot of respect, I think for Joe Gibbs and Joe Gibbs racing after how they've handled all this, to be honest, I think that this is, you know, this is your most successful driver. You, know, you just let him walk when it seems you've had plenty of time to figure out a sponsorship deal. I think it's short-sighted by them because Kyle Busch has even admitted it was short-sighted by, himself to think that he would have that car forever. I think it was short-sighted by Joe Gibbs racing to not almost have something else on the go in case Oracle fell through or something like that. Cause clearly it wasn't as secure as what they were thinking and they were misled or they just didn't read the room properly. There's something going on there that we don't, we will probably never know how deep those discussions gotten, what prevented that deal from really taking that next step. So if he had that, he'd still be a Joe Gibbs racing driver. If Mars and M&Ms were still around. Kyle Busch would still be a Joe Gibbs racing driver next year. There's no doubt about that. But they gave up on a guy just because he couldn't find sponsorship. That is a just. I say that obviously that's a big you know <laughs> problem in this sport when money pays and money talks. But the, I, I would think that they would put in a little bit more of an effort because Toyota definitely wanted to keep him. I don't know if Joe Gibbs and Joe Gibbs racing had the – as much faith as what they, I believe they should have in that in, in Kyle Bush. When you have Ty Gibbs that could easily wait another year, they publicly said that they were going to wait another year 
to bring him up to the cup series, maybe replace Martin Truex Jr. as he retires. I think they're in the middle of like almost a Hendrick Motorsports style shift here where they're going to go young and they, and they're going to build from the ground up. Christopher Bell's still very young. Ty Gibbs and whoever they're going to pick for that 19 car, whatever number that uh, they decide to choose for that car in the future, who goes in that car after Martin Truex Jr. Leaves who knows, but Denny Hamlin survives the entire Kyle Busch cycle. He came there in 2006. He's still there after Kyle Busch leaves going into 2023. So um, it's, I, I'm just more, you know, just disappointed in Joe Gibbs and Joe Gibbs race for how they handled it all. And uh, I think the statement that they put out was pretty weak, to be honest. I think, you know, there's a bit of hard feelings there, but it is just a statement at the end of the day. I'm just passionate about this stuff. So I, I will probably read into it more than most people will, but I, I, uh, I was just definitely let down by, by Joe Gibbs and especially the last couple of months when it seems like there was no way back for Kyle Busch. And he publicly admitted that to the media. Was he ever informed that the 18 car was no longer an option? He was. And that must have been a really, really interesting conversation and a tough conversation to have with Joe Gibbs and Kyle Busch. I disagree. I okay. think Joe Gibbs racing is looking long-term with this choice. I think it's not short-sighted. I think they're looking long-term. I think the short-term option for short-term success would absolutely be to bring Kyle Busch back. And I think that that was obviously their goal to bring Kyle Busch back. But given the circumstances they found themselves in, they opted for the long-term option rather than spending the money short-term to try to have success over the next one or two years versus getting Ty Gibbs in now and having your future be ready sooner, if that makes sense. What I will say is that in terms of your disrespect from Gibbs, I think that's kind of misplaced. I think that as a team, they've handled it actually pretty professionally. They haven't said anything bad about Kyle Busch, even when he's done some awkward things for them in the media over the course of how this has played out. I think they get, they were really transparent with him with the situation that they found themselves in, where early on in the process, they basically were like, we need to find sponsorship or we're not going to be able to make this happen. Um, and, and I think they gave him plenty of heads up to find a, a second opportunity because it, as you mentioned, it, it seemed like, or like the, it's been a couple of months that it's been, you're not going to be returning to the seat. Sorry. It's going to be Gibbs. You're going to have to find something else. And I think instead of what they could have done is try to lead him on, try to find sponsors for a long time, do the whole dance. And then it gets to, September, October, and they still don't have a deal. Everybody else has figured it out. And Kyle Busch has to find some awkward fit at some weird time of the off season. Instead, he has basically the whole summer to kind of field offers, feel what's best for him long-term and kind of make that choice from there. So I understand where you're coming from as a fan. Yeah. I understand the emotion. And I think it's perfectly valid to feel that way. I think that Joe Gibbs racing as a team handled this situation about as good as they could have given the situation that they found themselves in. I just find it really hard to believe that you can't sell Kyle Bush to a sponsor. Well, no, there's a difference between not being able to sell Kyle Bush and not being able to sell Kyle Bush for the amount that makes it make sense for them to keep him. And that's the difference. But, but he was Chirp, trying to, okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, for RCR, they're bringing in a big name free agent who's going to be their guy for multiple years and is going to replace the current number one driver that they have in a year's time for Joe Gibbs racing. He, he's the number two driver right now, probably to Denny Hamlin, given they're in the playoffs and everything like that wins and things like that. The success over the last few years, he's arguably the number three behind Truex and Hamlin as well. When you look at wins, when you look at four appearances, too, just no all those kind of yeah. things, he's the number three. Does it make sense to keep your number three driver for whatever circumstances, trying to give up whatever you are in sponsorship to fill a short-term gap when instead you can fill that number three seat, essentially. I'm not saying that Kyle Busch is actually the number three uh, or no, I, normal I number three. Mean. It's awkward yeah. to say for a top team like that when it's so close, but it makes more sense for them, I think, rather than trying to shoehorn a fit for Kyle Busch to bring in Ky Ty Gibbs now and get that process going. It, it, like I, I think that it's going to be slow going process for Gibbs. I don't think he's going to be great out of the gate. I think it'll be a lot similar to William Byron, maybe not quite as low as it was for Byron out of the gate, but we're talking yeah. similar age. We're talking similar success on the way up and we're talking a similar level of team. So um, it's awkward situation for everybody involved, 
Um, but I think that it, it's basically the way that it probably was going to always go if, if Joe Gibbs Racing wasn't going to find that one big sponsor, which they almost did an Oracle and then it fell through. So Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think they lost a bit of faith in him after 2020 with the Adam Stevens change. I, I think that was a... I know Kyle has said publicly that, you know, Stevens kind of gave up on him and he wanted something different. He didn't felt like the partnership was working, but I'm sure that that was something they could have reconciled after one bad season. You know, like I know the back half of 2019 was still tough for them too, before they won the championship. If that championship isn't in there, I mean, you know, they, like they then... could have rectified it. I'm sure. But for the crew chief, he's probably looking at how things have gone in the past for Kyle Busch crew chiefs. He's looking at how the relationship has gone. It's gone very good. But if you have an opportunity to try something new with the young driver that's on his way up at a team, it's not a necessarily the bad decision to go and try stuff well, out he's made there. The right and, decision and at clearly, the end of the day now, and clearly, it's been the right decision for him. So yeah, so I mean, it's just it's just hard to fathom that this is like the end of that era. I never would have thought that he would leave that team. I thought he was a Joe Gibbs life or Joe Gibbs racing for forever, and. It is, you know, it is sad. Like, like it is sad for I think every Kyle Busch fan to think that this is that this is the end of it. But also, if you're just a NASCAR fan, you're excited by the possibility of RCR becoming a threat again and having just more of an equal playing field across more teams. If you have more star drivers across more star teams, then you're going to have more of an even playing field if all the equipment is continuously progressing the way it is right now with this next gen car. Nobody's really broke through Which it right now. But- which it won't. And probably starting next season, we will see a bit of a change, but you know, it's going to be a gradual process uh, when you have a, a car that is more, more stock parts than, than not in a lot of yep. ways, you know? So oh, there's, only so much you, there's so much, there's not only so much you could do, but at the end of the day, I'm going to be the, you cannot draw too much, you know, emphasis on uh, Ty gives his first season here. We'll see what he, he does. Is he a playoff guy that could make it? Maybe. I I think that's probably a reasonable expectation. But when you look at how many wins we've had this season, you got to be almost a race winner to make the playoffs then consistent on points. And will Ty Gibbs win a race next season? You're darn right that Joe Gibbs is going to give him every opportunity and the equipment that he can to make sure that that's even a possibility for his grandson. So, um, and the flagship 18 car. So, you know, they got a lot to prove over there at JGR, but almost more to prove at RCR with Kyle Busch making, seeing if that's the right decision he made.